Hi, I'm the Love Dinosaur, and in today's video, I'd like to talk to you about releasing perfectionism. Okay. Well, perfectionism. Some of us may have heard perfectionism is a curse, right? We may have heard uh, that, you know, practice makes perfect. There's lots of different things we probably have heard in connection with the idea of being perfect, both good and bad. And, you know, in my experience, in my life, I've really come to realize that it's not about being perfect, it's not about trying to not be perfect, <laughs> but just releasing it, releasing the concept from even, you know, having any weight on you. Now, okay, what is perfect? What is being perfect? Perfect, um, I'm just going to go from my heart here. Perfect means complete. Perfect means full. Uh, or empty. Perfect means without flaw. Perfect means exactly the way it was intended. So, and, and what is perfectionism? Perfectionism is the tendency, the belief that um, I am not perfect so that I must become perfect through some effort of my will. <laughs> I laugh at it because in and of itself that ism, perfectionism, holds a, a faulty belief, which is that I'm not perfect. Or you are not perfect. That's a faulty belief. And it actually holds another faulty belief, which is that we can become other than we are. So to say that we start out not perfect, then we become perfect. Again, it's a faulty belief. Now, if you saw a river that at one time was dried up during the hot season and then during the wet season it became it swelled and became full which is the perfect river? the dry one which just has a trickle or almost nothing or the full one which is swelling to the banks and almost going up in to the sides of the land and swallowing up the houses which one is perfect? You can see that the concept is silly. Of course, a dry river has its own function or lack of something, and, and a full river has its own function and also its own dangers. So, uh, you know, people can jump into a full river and get swept away. Uh, when you're thirsty and you have a dry river, then it doesn't help you. So, or you want to grow your crops and there's no water. But neither is is perfect. Of course, when you uh, have the dry river, you think that having a full river would be better. Or maybe when you have a swollen river, you think having a river with less water would be better. It's the same way with, with our life. When we are lacking money, we feel that if I had more money, that would be better. Maybe even perfect. Or when you have... Uh, too much abundance, or material abundance. Um, I don't think there's ever too much abundance, but you could have too much material things, you feel smothered, right? Like you got fancy stuff, you're always thinking about your money, you're always thinking about your possessions and how to protect them and, and all this stuff. You just want to just run off into the wilderness and give up everything, you think that would be better. Of course we know that nothing would actually be better, it would just be different. <clears throat> a funny thing about perfectionism, 
uh, is imagine, if you will, that you already have everything that you're striving for, or you've already attained that perfect state that you're looking for. You are the perfect father <laughs> or the perfect mother. It's ridiculous to even consider that, right? I mean, I'm the perfect dad. What the heck? What does that mean? Right? Or you, you're the perfect employee, or you're the perfect boss, or you're the perfect entrepreneur. You just know how to make money and you know how to give value to people. Right? Or you're the perfect guitarist or piano player or violin player. Everyone wants to hear you. Now on that, on the other side of it, okay, what then? What, what do you do? You have everything you've always wanted. You've got it. Now what? Do you just die? I think when you, you realize that when you get to that point, I have everything I wanted. If you could ever get to that point, I don't know. But if you, if you have, in that state, all your dreams are accomplished, you have what you always wanted, what's the point of life then? If you're not striving for something new. So it's in the striving that we really find the meaning, we find the joy, we get the juices of life. It's in the contrast of having less than having more, having just the right amount, experiencing all those ranges is part of the beauty of life. So I think if I got to the point in my life where I had everything, I'm the perfect father, <laughs> the perfect teacher, the perfect author, the perfect entrepreneur, uh, the perfect guitarist, songwriter, you know, whatever I'm striving for. I reached it. I might have gotten there. But then what's the point? Well, then the point is now to just have fun with everything, to explore the creation to know what are other possibilities that exist that I could experience in this lifetime, right? And this is all stuff I could do in the middle of the mess and chaos that my life is already. And I say mess and chaos loosely, I mean, I feel that I'm living a very bountiful and uh, blessed life, but it's still chaotic and messy every day, just like any other human being. But it's in this state that I can enjoy the, uh, you know, I had a heavy metal band in high school called Beauty and Chaos, that I can enjoy the beauty amidst the chaos. And that's how my life has been. Maybe it's how I choose to see it, but it works for me to know that it is chaos and I'm going to enjoy the beauty anyway. So with perfectionism comes this idea that we have to be something that we're not now and that we're not good enough now. And I've carried that with me for many years and it, it sucks. It's not a belief that benefits me. So I'd rather believe, choose to believe that I am good enough and that life is what it is. Life is how I meet it today. What beliefs, what um, determinations am I bringing to my life today? Am I determined to have fun today? Yeah. Am I determined that no matter what I see in myself as imperfect or flawed or needing work, that I could still love that part of myself and be glad for the opportunity to experience it. You know, as I believe that we're all one giant living thing. Right? It makes sense. Like, we're all one giant living thing. You can call it God. You can call it the creation of the universe. But we're all part of this giant living thing. Just one small teeny part. So, this giant living thing wants to experience infinity. Infinite possibilities. It wants to experience infinite possibilities. So the way to do that is to create infinitesimal amounts of living beings who can shrink their um, perception so much that of being, you know, all, the all that is to something being much, much, much smaller and then experience the all that is from the inside. And we, we are that. 
So we're already perfect because we are all that is, and all that is is all that is, and that's enough. There is nothing else. We're just tiny, teeny, teeny, teeny bits, like a drop in the ocean of that. Like one drop in the ocean, you separate it from the ocean, it's a drop, you put it back in, it mingles, you obviously can't tell where that drop went. We're, we're like that, that's life and death. In my, uh, to, my, to my mind, it makes sense. And a lot of traditions believe a similar thing, including Buddhism and Hinduism. Um, and a lot of other belief systems that are out there that don't even prescribe themselves to being a religion. You know, that we're all part of the all that is, God consciousness, whatever you want to call it, the creation, experiencing itself, because the creation is intelligent enough to know that it's pretty cool. And how do you experience something pretty cool uh, unless you kind of create a vehicle to do that, right? Uh, you can go to the Coney Island rides and ride the cyclone, or before the cyclone was built, you can go there and look at the beach. So, you know, some entrepreneur along the way realized if you build a ride that gives people this incredible thrill and they can see the beach too, that might be a little extra cool and we can make some money, you know? So, the universe is not that different from entrepreneurs. <laughs> That's why entrepreneurs exist. It's, a, it's like a, um, a reflection of what's in the nature of the universe. The universe wants to have fun. It's just, it's all over. You know, it, you can tell. You can just tell. So how do you release perfectionism? Well, for me, what works is to really go back to the old adage, which is, uh, it's about the journey, not the destination. It's tried and true, it's cliche, but just think about that. It's about the journey, not the destination. So, how many times have you really wanted something? I want a Nintendo game, video game. You get the game. You play a little bit, you're bored. Or you play it a lot, and then you want another game. So, obviously the end point, getting the game, is just where the fun begins, the new fun begins. And then that'll use itself up, and then it will evolve into the next desire. But uh, to actually attain something that you're going after is never enough, right? So perfectionism is this huge uh, facade. It's kind of like... Um, I remember reading a Buddhist comic book where the Buddha led people through the desert and he said, over there is um, this really great uh, oasis. Let's all go there. And they go there for one day, two days, three days, and they finally get to it. And then it turns out it wasn't an oasis at all. It was a, a big rock. Or, on the other hand, and then they have to find the new thing to get to. So in other words, when they achieve what they thought they were going after, it wasn't much of anything at all. Then there's the other hand, where they actually do reach this palace and they have wonderful food and, and lovely women and all this great stuff. They don't need to go anywhere. They're like, sort of found heaven. But then the Buddha says, no, this isn't it. We gotta keep going. We're headed towards that other place in the distance, you know? So every desire, every uh, goal that we go after, go after has a function to move us further along the path. But it's, if we're not experiencing and enjoying what's in the path, we're missing the whole adventure. Because at some point we're going to die, the adventure's over. Did we enjoy it along the way? Did we? Because it's not about the arrival, it's not like how quick can I get to death? Because that's ultimately where we're going in this incarnation anyway. Right? And there's the next and the next, and the next. So, again, what's helped me to release perfectionism is to enjoy the process. And how do you enjoy the process? Just to see that I'm the creation. I have all that I need. 
I mean, I'm fortunate to have material things in my life. I think many of us have more, more than we need. Um, and <clears throat> I don't need more. I am complete. Of course, I'm, I'm a work in progress. So part of me, the purpose of continuing to live is to achieve more and to experience more and to, uh, you know, explore more and to create more value and to help more people because I get joy out of that process. And the creation, which I am a part of, benefits from those type of behaviors. So obviously I want to in improve the conditions of the creation, which I am, which I am a part of. <clears throat> it's all reflection. So basically, you know, just think about where, where in your life are you being too perfect? Too perfect. <laughs> where are you trying to be perfect? Where? <clears throat> and, and you're kind of missing the boat. You know, it's like, remember, if we are perfect, nobody's going to give us that star on our report card of life, and then we get to be on the, the honor roll of perfect people. No, nobody cares. Because nobody else around us is perfect. So are they going to clap for us because we're perfect? No. <clears throat> People do clap for you when you try, fail, and get back up. People do clap for you when you struggle to uh, enjoy life despite hardships or when you, you know, achieve something that takes effort over time or when you try something new, you know. Or people are happy for you when you're just able to smile. Like, wow, I like this guy. He smiles a lot. It makes me feel good. Smiling is great. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be perfect to smile. A smile in itself is definitely perfect. As is. Um, so anyway, you know, this is my two cents. This is where I am today. I'm, I'm, these videos are unedited. These videos are something that I feel from a very deep part of me that I want to transmit. I want to put into the, the waves out there. Hopefully you can vibe on it. Hopefully you get something out of it. Hopefully it inspires you to make your creation, whether it's a video, whether it's a song, whether uh, you're a lawyer and then you go in and you just kind of do what lawyers do, but with a fresh look on things, whether you're a bike repairman or, or a person who works on bridges. I just hope to inspire you to enjoy the process, to release trying to be perfect parent, perfect teacher, perfect role model. Just be yourself and make an effort that's in harmony with what you really, truly believe. Not what you were told to believe, not what you think you should believe, but what you truly believe inside about yourself and about all of creation. Remember. We all have freedom of choice, and that's beautiful. We can choose how we're going to think, how we're going to be, how we're going to respond to situations. Freedom of choice is our birthright, and it's what makes this whole creation truly unique, amazing, and it's what allows true love to exist. True love cannot exist unless we freely choose to love the other. That's my thoughts on perfectionism today. I know I strayed here and there. I'm not, imper I'm not perfect, so I'm okay with that. Hopefully you can learn from my imperfection as well and, and be okay with yours. So that's all for now. Please have an imperfect and joyful, joyful day, week, month ahead. Ever thought about this. I've been walking through the streets of Brooklyn wondering where God is and will I find Thank you.
been praying on my knees at night and I try to in the morning some people tell me no one's listening no one's listening no one's listening but how can I believe them when those who are whining should be minding of their own business because I know Your sister or your mother or your girlfriend She wears a trillion masks I don't think she hides in buildings Made of cement She's a new and me And the air we breathe She's the fire in our hearts And the land beneath our feet And let's not start another misconception God's not really a she How could you be Sitting still on a bus, on a train, or on an aeroplane, and we're all going somewhere. Will we lose? Will we gain? In the end, it's all the same because I know something about the flesh I wear. It's only here for a few years, but I am ancient. Yes, I go on and 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 on. And if you're wondering where God is, He's probably standing. Just the beat.